Louisville has had many famous filmmakers, but one that sticks out and who's had a hand in changing the industry was Todd Browning. Browning's original name was Charles Albert Browning. He was born on July 12, 1880 in Louisville, Kentucky. He was the son of a professional baseball player, Pete Browning, who played for the Louisville Colonels. Todd ran away from home at the age of 16 and found that being in circuses and carnivals provided a comfortable living. He was a clown, contortionist, magician's assistant, and barker while being there. While working in vaudeville as a blackface comedian, he was approached and hired for the long-running burlesque revue The Whirl of Mirth, in which he appeared in sketches that were based off of popular comic strip characters of that period. In 1913, the Biograph Company signed him under the supervision of D.W. Griffith, where he was featured in a series of knockabout comedies. Browning went on to co-star in the Bill the Office Boy comedy series in 1914 for the Mutual Film Corporation. He made his directorial debut in 1915 with the one real silent, The Lucky Transfer. But in June of the same year, while driving drunk, he collided at high speed with a moving train. Browning was riding around with two actors, George A. Siegeman and Elmer Booth. Browning and Siegeman were severely injured while Booth was killed. During his recovery, he turned to screenwriting, and once he recovered, he had a small role in Griffin's Intolerance while functioning as an assistant director on the film. He moved to the Fine Arts Film Company in 1917, where he co-directed three pictures with Wilfred Lucas, including his first full-length feature, Jim Blutzo. Browning spent a year at Metro Pictures before signing with the Universal Film Manufacturing Company in 1918. There, he made nine films, including The Wicked Darling, Outside the Law, and the hit The Virgin of Stambul. In 1925, Browning moved to MGM, where he wrote and directed a series of bizarre films. Films like The Road to Mandalay, The Blackbird, The Unknown, The Big City, and Where East is East. Browning finally went on to direct his first talkie, The Thirteenth Chair. He jumped back to Universal to remake Outside the Law with sound this time. While at Universal, he then made his most critically acclaimed movie, which was Dracula. Browning was able to get Bela Lugosi to play the title character in his film, after Lugosi had already played the part on stage for three years and that version was primary basis for the film. After creating Universal's first classic horror film, it enabled Browning to flourish throughout the early 1930s. Back at MGM, Browning delivered a surprise with Freaks in 1932, a shocking morality play that boldly cast a number of actual sideshow performers. The film was undoubtedly inspired by his own younger days with the circus. However, studio lead Louis B. Mayer was reportedly appalled when he saw it, and he curtailed its distribution. Though later it would be hailed as the director's masterpiece, Freaks was not a fan favorite when first released. British censors even banned the picture in Great Britain for more than three decades. Freaks ended Browning's Hollywood career and he would only direct four more films. The heavy drinking Browning retired after making his last film, Miracles for Sale, in 1939. It's never fully explained why he retired, but speculated he would never bounce back from Freaks. He exiled himself to his home in Malibu and then went into virtual seclusion after the death of his second wife in 1944. He then died on October 6, 1962 in Malibu, California.